guys, this is Tash, the Starcross Stitcher. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I don't know what the date is, the 2nd of December, and I'm back for another video. I've got a lot of fun stuff to show you. Um, I'm in a different place in the room at the moment. I've got all my, this is where I keep all my stitching charts, and my sister's kids did some artwork on some of the boxes. Um, the room is coming together. I did have all of my finishes strung up behind me on the wall here. I'll put in a photo for you to see. It stayed up for about three days and then the hook fell down. I just had those stick on hooks on the wall and they just fell down. Um, so, never mind. It's not always going to work. Um, yeah, oh my gosh. So, I said I was really good last month. I didn't buy anything. Um, but I made up for that this month. I bought quite a few things. You can see most of it, actually. There's a lot of fabric there, right? It looks fun. Oh, so pretty. Wow. Wow. Ooh, wow. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> that was weird, right? Um, where's the camera? I'm using my iPad for the first time ever to film a floss tube. It's right there. Okay. Um, everything is different. Everything's different. You're really far away from me. I'm sitting at my workbench, not at my regular desk, and I'm on a November stitching. I had a good month. Um, I finished five things in November. That's pretty good, right? Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so I'll show you all my finishes, and then I'll show you what I worked on, and then I'll show you some haul. I think that's what we'll do. So, first thing I finished in November, you've already seen, it's this one. So you can see the light from the window now. This is Red Skies at Night by Mirabilia. I finished that early in the month. Let's put it under there. Uh, the next finish was... The Joyful Stocking. This was my year of starts start in October. Turn around, please. There you go. Joy. It's very cute, isn't it? Um, then my year of starts start for the 17th of November was another stocking. Obviously, you can tell I'm getting these done for Christmas gifts for people. There's the Evergreen Stocking. Very cute. So now I have four of these completed. Um, and I think that's all the gifts I need to give this year. It's actually maybe more than what I need to give this year, but these four are complete. These two are completed. There's two more I already have completed. And part of my haul this month was getting the last two I need, but we'll get to that in a minute. So that's three finishes. One, two, Red Skies at Night. Uh, the, the next thing I finished was Undulations by Jardin Privé. I might have to stand up for this one. So there you go. I love this. I think this is so sweet and adorable. Um, by Jardin Privé. Um, I changed up the colours for myself. Um, the Obviously the black is just 310. But all the other colours in the chart I felt were a bit dull. So I brightened them up a bit. Uh, some of the colours are the same. I think... The purples are the same, but I changed the reds and the pinks, and I might have changed the blue, I'm not sure. Um, it's stitched 1 over 2 on 40 count linen, and I think it's gorgeous, and I love it, and I want to stitch it 100 more times. Um, it was really quick, and it's so sweet. Yeah, I'm in love with it. I'm in love with it. Uh, I'm not giving the chart for this one away, because I think I'll stitch it again, because it's lovely. Oh, and I changed the colour of the greens as well because they were very dark and dull. But I think that is so pretty. And then the last finish for the month, ugh, I've got too much stuff on this table, was Butt Fairy. Now you might remember that I started this also in Mania. Um, I call her Butt Fairy. Uh, the real name of the kit is Blueberry Dessert. It's a kit by Neocraft, which is a Russian company. So all the instructions were in Russian. <laughs> The threads were Finca, I think they were Finca threads, and this is 27 count uh, Linda fabric. Um, and it's huge and I didn't enjoy stitching on it, but it did turn out very cute. I'm going to frame this and hang this in my kitchen, maybe in my pantry. I just love the idea of a fairy coming into your house and getting stuck in the jam. <laughs> um, yeah, I love those two finishes. I'm really happy I got them done. Um, I started them in Mania and um, they've both been calling to me a lot and I've wanted to get them done because I think they're lovely but I just haven't done it until now so yay. 
Um, so I did work on other things for the month. Let's see. I did... I have been keeping up with Anda Forest Group. I'm doing this as a stitch along with my mother. Um, we're doing two motifs every weekend. Um, so I haven't worked on it yet this weekend. But I have been working in this area here. You can see that giant tree there. You know, a few more trees, a few mushrooms, bumblebees, birds, mouse. I'm obviously not going to sign and date it until the year I finish it, which I believe will be 2019. So that's Anda Forest Grew. It's stitched one over two on 35 count something linen. It's kind of oatmeal-y. It's really nice. Um, I, I've also put a little bit of work into everybody's favourite, including mine. Oops. Oh, this is falling apart. This is the Celtic Sampler, um, part one, Wallace. Ah, there you go. That's better. You can see. So I've been working on this motif at the top here, and it's taking me forever. There's like 600 queen stitches in that, just in this square. So yeah, it's taking me a while. I'm not enjoying it. I don't love queen stitches, but you can see I finished two of the stars. The star in the middle is dark blue and light blue, and the star here and here are dark red and light red. So I think once I finish the stars, the filling in will go pretty quickly, so I just need to get it done. I wanted to finish um, this motif before the end of the year. Don't know if that's going to happen. I want to finish all the stitching on this next year. so. I also don't know if that's going to happen, but we'll see. I can dream. I can dream. I've just been working on it now and then. Usually between projects, I'll do a couple of lengths of thread until I get sick of queen stitches. I just really have a problem with queen stitches. I love that piece. It's gorgeous. It's so beautiful, but I just have such a problem with queen stitches. Um, apart from those two, I also worked on Regal Peacocks by Teresa Wensler. Um, I'll stick a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished. This comes from the Just Cross Stitch magazine, something 1989, something something. Go back to previous videos if you really want to know. Um, and this is what I've done so far. There you go, that's better. Oops, I got a message. Yep, so still a lot to do on that. This, I found it hard to concentrate on this, so I didn't do too much work. I did a few days and then just stopped. And then my, the last thing I worked on in November was um, a new start. It came with my haul from 123 Stitch. It is Proud Penguin from the Winter Holiday Collection. This is gonna be for Tim for Christmas because he loves penguins. And I just saw this, it was on special when I was making my 123 Stitch order. So I got it. <laughs> and it's a, a little magnet to go on the fridge. I haven't done much, I only started it started it the day before yesterday but I didn't stitch it all yesterday so there you go a little tiny bit of progress I might finish him today I think I'll either finish him or I'll make a new start because I also need to talk about the new starts I'm going to make I'm planning five new starts this month maybe <laughs> to make up for the five new starts the five things I finished last month yeah I'll justify it like that I don't know I'm just in a starting mood, I don't know why. I finished all these things and I felt great about it and now all I wanna do is start all the things. Um, but I'll do the haul first, okay. So yeah, I had a one, two, three stitch order. Um, I bought that Proud Penguin. I also bought the last two charm stockings from the stocking series. This is also Mill Hill. There's Mr. Snowflake and there is Angelic stocking. They're very cute. So I don't know if I'll stitch these this year, I don't need to, because I don't think I need to give them to anyone this year. Might save them for next year's gifts. Um, I need more places to put things that I've been through. I got a few, this order was sort of to kit a few things up. I got a few gentle art threads and weeks dye works threads that I was missing for various things. And I don't go through colours, there you go, they're pretty. Um, I got the anchor threads that I need to get for the unicorn lady in the unicorn tapestry um, it is charted for German wools and the, per the person who gave me the chart actually has already done a nice conversion into some anchor threads and some DMC threads so I maybe could have converted these into DMC but I decided I can just buy them because I think she's worked hard and done 
very careful conversion, obviously, if she's used both. Um, so I went and got the right ones. Um, and I got three, three, yes, three charts. Because you always have to buy a chart. <laughs> Past and Present by Rosewood Manor. This is one that I've been lusting after for a long time. I love it. And I want to find an excuse to stitch it next year. I love this. I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yep, I love it. I can't stop saying it. I love it. Um, I got one of the Baroque Beauties. This is Millicent by Glendon Place. I already have, I think, Isabella. There are two more, uh, Catherine and Elizabeth. And Jessie Marie just finished Elizabeth last week, I think, and it looks incredible. Her fabric is spot on, incredible. So I might have to get that fabric and do all of these on that fabric. Um, she used Buttercup from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. Um, yep. <sighs> love it. Love it, love it. These charts have... Um, this one has three packs of Mill Hill beads. Three packs of... No. <laughs> Three packs of Mill Hill beads, five packs of Mill Hill treasures, um, five spools of Krynik, and then all the just TMC floss. So yeah, it's a big deal. I also got vintage birds because I think it's beautiful and I would like to stitch it one day. I've seen a few people stitching it and I'm crazy about it. Oh, and I'm just looking on the back and there's also vintage stars, which I don't really care so much for, and vintage flowers, which is pretty. Okay, um, the last thing I got from 123 Stitch was a fat half of Willow Green Belfast. Um, it's big. It's big. I don't think I've ever had a fat half. Yes, I have. Yeah, it's big. I have had a fat half before. I've actually had a full yard before. But, yeah, this is big. And the reason I got this is because for my new year, new start, I will be doing... Villa Mirabilia as part of a stitch along with a few of the other Aussie girls who have lost few channels and probably a few who don't um, so yeah she will go on there this is the recommended fabric um, because it calls for a well it calls for bigger than a fat quarter so it doesn't need a whole fat half but I didn't want to buy um, an expensive hand dyed fabric and then not have it be perfect so yeah this is what she'll go on and I think the colours will pop off will pop off this fabric and it will look lovely. So there's that. That is everything from 123 Stitch. So I bought that this month. I also bought um, November. I bought that in November. I also made an order from the drawn thread, which my dad will be bringing back with him from the States. He's over there at the moment. Um, there are a couple of small eBay, just one chart here and there from eBay that will also be coming back with him. Um, and so I was watching Dina at Half Stitch Cross Stitch. I think it was her video and she went to the retreat somewhere. <laughs> I can't keep up. I'm sorry. There's so many retreats. I can't keep up. Um, she was at a retreat somewhere and Teresa, Teresa? Yes, Teresa from Shakespeare's Peddler had um, a, like a, a store? What do they call it? An open box, open case where you open up the, oh my gosh, what's it called? Where you open up your cases and show, a trunk show, a trunk show. Okay, she had a trunk show and showed all of her designs and she had lots of models there. And Teresa actually went through and talked about a lot of her models. And the one that she talked about that I really loved was this one, which is Fractive Friends. And it's just really cute. Um, I love how she said that the friend on the right has a homemade and patched dress with a simpler house, crazy hair and wildflowers. And the girl on the left is like all fancy and put together and manicured flowers in a nice big house. And it's just the fact that, you know, two people who are different can be friends and still love each other for what's inside, not what's outside. And it's so sweet. I just think it's lovely. And um, she stitched it on 40 count silk gauze um, and let me tell you there's a lot of black background on that so I don't know if I'll be doing that. Uh, the stitch count is 172 by 162. 
Um, but what I thought I might do is I do have a piece of 40 count even weave um, or even I might try 55 count linen um, and dye one of them to a really dark black colour and just stitch it over one on that. I don't know. I don't know if the linen is even enough that, that it will look good, but I might try it. I'm interested. I'm interested. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's so sweet. Um, and since I was ordering, no chart can travel alone. Where are they? I got two more from her. Oh, they're right here. Um, this, oh, this is also from Shakespeare's Peddler. Um, I ordered these from Jen's Stitching Niche on Etsy. Go and check her out. And that's, of course, um, Jan has a Fosty channel as well. Um, this is Shakespeare Peddler. This is Jenny Bean's Humble Servant Sampler. Um, I know that Lisa from Lisa's Stitching and Such is stitching this. And it's gorgeous, and I really love what she did with changing the words here, because the words here say, Jenny Bean, an humble servant to the Lord. And, you know, I'm not religious, and neither is Lisa, and so she changed it up. And she changed it to say, um, Jenny Bean stitched this humble sampler, I think. And I, I just, I like that. And I think I will change mine the same way. Lisa, you're an inspiration. Please let me copy you, please. Um, and yeah, I love it. There are also a couple more Jenny Bean samplers. I know there's Jen, Jen blah, 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 blah. I know that there is Jenny Bean Halloween sampler, which wasn't in stock, otherwise I would have bought it. And there's another one, and it might be a Christmas one, but I didn't get it. I'll stitch this one first. But I like it, the humble sampler. And the last thing I got was Fractive Flowers by Lardy Dada. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So don't know when I'll stitch any of those, but They'll come up. They'll come up. Nice to have a bit more, a bit more stuff to stitch. I'm starting to feel kind of overwhelmed by my stash. Like there are just so many things that I want to stitch and I want to stitch them all now. And I don't know why that's a problem. <laughs> um, okay, so there's a bit of fabric here that I'd like to show you. This is not my picture this plus order. That still has not arrived. I'm waiting as patiently as I can. Um, I signed up for the Fabric of the Month Club from Colour Cascades Fabric and I got three months all at once. So September Fabric of the Month, these are all 32 count Belfast. I think everything I'm going to show you here, yes, is 32 count Belfast. This is September Fabric of the Month from Colour Cascades. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yep, still gorgeous. Um, it's called Lavender Fields. Lavender Fields. Tammy did a great job, I think it's beautiful. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'll put on this or on any or mo most of these, any of these, but yeah, love it. Uh, this one was October and it's called, it's just called October 2017. And it's purple, <laughs> just purple. Oh, they smell really good. They smell like very sweet fabric softener, lovely. Um, yeah, it's a really nice purple. Oh, I like how it looks like it's sort of a starburst from here. Can you see that? Or am I seeing things? Eh, maybe. It's lovely. Um, yeah, there's no name on that one. That is just the October fabric of the month. Um, and November. This is my favourite one. Oh, no, it's looking so red on the, on the camera. No, it's really orange. It's like... Mm, it's, it's as orange as the words on my shirt, which still look a bit redder than they are in real life. This is called Rocket Queen, isn't it? Yes, Rocket Queen. And I love it. It's amazing. It's a shame it looks so red to you. It's really, really bright, like neon orange. It's incredible. And there's even some, like this part down here is kind of yellowy, quite yellowy as well. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's looking so corally on the screen because it's not. It's orange and it's incredible. It's amazing. It's like really saturated colour. It's fantastic. Um, so that was Colour Cascades Fabric of the Month. The rest of this is Under the Sea Fabrics. I also signed up for their Fabric of the Month. This is 32. They're all 32 Belfast. Uh, this was the Fabric of the Month for November, I think. And this is Rosalind. Yeah, and the colour looks good. It's purple and sort of burgundy. It's pretty amazing also. 
no idea what I'll stitch on that, but something will be perfect. Yeah, this is a challenging color for me. This is, it's not obvious to me at all what I would put on this, but something, like I say, something will be perfect. Um, then I made a regular order. Um, this was months ago. Um, see, all, all of this that came, only two pieces were actually paid for this month. So the rest of it's all just from months and months ago that just got here. This is Under the Sea Fabrics Beach Walk. Also Belfast Linen. And that's so pretty. It's like sandy, peachy colour with grey splot not splotches. You know, grey smudges maybe. It's really nice. I'm not such a fan of the white bits. You know, like there's a big, big white bit across the middle here, but yeah, it definitely looks sandy, doesn't it? I love it. It's so pretty. It's really pretty. I mean, gosh. I don't know, again, what I'm going to use this for. I just wanted to get it because I've heard a lot of people talk about Beach Walk and how nice it is. And I agree. I think it's it's kind of, I would call it a neutral. Like, you could stitch a lot of things on this and call this a neutral. Um, I would like, actually, to get a fat half of this and do that Mirabilia Seaside Kingdom on it. Although I think it calls for cream because the background is supposed to be white, like creamy coloured. So that might not work. A lot of that, a lot of that pattern isn't filled in. So it relies heavily on the background fabric. I like that. It's pretty. Uh, the next one is Looking Glass. Also Belfast 32 count linen looking glass. And this is very purpley. It's looking a bit white to you, but it's a nice light purple. Oh, there you go. When you look in here, you can sort of see how purple it is. Yeah, see, that's the colour it is. The colour you're seeing on the inside there. That's purple. Um, looking glass. I expected this to be a lot more of this sort of greyish colour um, and a lot less of this sort of purple colour, but I don't have a problem with how it is. I didn't buy it for something specific. I like it very much. I actually considered, when I opened this, considered um, putting Shroomhilda on this. Here's Shroomhilda. I'm going to start her very soon. I considered putting her on this um, because she's quite purple and browny grey, but I think she'd disappear. And I did a little floss toss before and I'm very happy with what I chose. So, folding these up is tricky. Okay, um, and then I got two fat eights from Under the Sea Fabrics. This is River Sticks. And it's opalescent. I don't think you can see that sparkle, but it is opalescent. And isn't that pretty cool? I got this one and the next one um, for a specific start, which I'll tell you about in a minute. So that's River Sticks. And the last one, this is probably my favourite. It's amazing. This is called Hamlet. And look at that. Yeah, you're seeing good colour. Look at that. It's like... The most amazing, it's like those nebula images that you get. It, uh, I think you can see the opalescent on this. Oh my god, I'm in love with this. I love it. I, that big black splotch in the middle is a little bit like bright boom, but um, yeah. But I think it'll still work. I love this. I love this. It's incredible. This purple is so beautiful. I've got a lot of purple here, unintentionally. <laughs> a lot of purple. Um... Yeah. Wow. Wow. I'm so happy with all my fabric. It's so bright and pretty and amazing and... Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so much sash. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, but a lot of that I paid for a long time ago. Um, except for the 123 stitch order. Most of it came from earlier than this month. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the starts I want to make before the end of the year. I think the reason I'm feeling startitis is because, number one, I had a load of finishes last month, November, and now I'm down to 25 or something whips, and for some reason I feel like I should have more. No, that's not it. Um, I, I think it's because I'm thinking about year of whips and I want to have whips to finish next year. I, it's not like I don't have enough whips. I don't know why I want to start things, but I do. And I've decided I'm just going to do it. I've got quite a few things to start 
The first one is the Silver Medieval Sampler. You've all seen this, I've showed you all before. Um, I'm going to put in a video now where I did a little floss toss between these two fabrics to decide which one I'm going to use. Here's the video. Hi guys, I'm doing a little floss toss for um, the Silver Medieval Sampler. I'm sort of tossing up between a couple of different fabrics I have that I want to use. So this is what it looks like. I liked how this sort of purpley colour in the background looks really nice. Um, this is opalescent Hamlet from Under the Sea Fabrics. It's 32 Count Belfast. And I've got the threads on here. The fabric, the colour that you see on the screen is exactly how it looks in real life. It's beautiful fabric. I mean, incredible look at that. Um, so I think all the flosses show up here. But I feel like it doesn't make so much sense on the purple when I look at it through here. So if I come over to the next one, which is... Where's the tag? River Styx, also 32 count opalescent Belfast. And yep, the colour you're seeing is pretty good. It's actually a little bit more green. Slightly greener in real life. Um, yeah. Maybe if I put the purple in too, you'll see how green it is. No, that's all right. It, it is pretty close to what you see. And I just think maybe the colors make a little more sense on this one. Cause I don't know, you know, I'm lucky. I've got two good options. I don't know. I think I'll probably, let me look. See, these are nice sort of purpley grays and they look great on here. But these sort of more greeny greys don't look so good. And then you come over here <laughs> and the greeny greys look a lot better. And actually the purpley greys do still look good. So I'm pretty sure I'll go for River Styx. Okay. Yep, I think it's River Styx. I'm back. Um, so, Silver Medieval Sampler with... What did I decide? I think I decided River Styx. So, that's one start. I'm just going to... Start organising myself a little bit. Shroomhilda, which I just talked about, I've decided not to put it on. I might do another floss toss with the colours, honestly, because it might actually work on Looking Glass. So I'll show you a floss toss. She will either go on Looking Glass or Natural Linen. So I need to do another floss toss. Uh, this is Shroomhilda by Dimples Designs. That's Terence Nolan who does those amazing Wee Beasties patterns. Um, so this is Shroomhilda. It calls for 32 count platinum linen. I don't have any of that. But like the closest I have is like, I don't know, sort of off-white stuff. And I don't think it looks as good as this, which is just natural linen. Um, the reason I thought of doing natural is because, uh, of course, I always like try to find other people who have stitched things and see what fabric they used and try to make a decision and I saw someone who it looked like that she had stitched it on natural linen is that gonna be okay yeah it should be um it looked like she had stitched it on natural linen but when I read the information she actually had stitched it on platinum um but I really liked the the thought of it being on natural because she is a mushroom after all so I think I'll go with this the silks are pretty of course, it's also got beads, and Krynik, and Krynik, and more Krynik. It's like a mirror. Silks, beads, and Krynik's. Um, yeah, but I love this and I can't wait to start. I might even start it today. That's Shroomhilda. Hi guys, I'm just doing another floss toss for Shroomhilda. So, this is 32 Count Looking Glass from Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, I'm not sure what to think about this. I'm worried that we're going to lose these, you know, 3743. This is almost exactly this colour. I'm worried that those will get lost. I'm worried when we come over to these greys. See, it's quite grey. You know, 415 might disappear. So might this one. These ones here. Overall, and this pebbles one as well. This, this is for the border. And I think this might get lost completely. I don't know. Overall, I do like it. Let me take these off and have a closer look. Overall, yeah, I do like it. I do. 
I like this dirty bit here. I'd like to stick it right on there. But I don't know if it's going to work. Okay, so what do you think about this as compared to the natural linen? Can you please leave me a comment and let me know what you think? Because I'm confused. This is nice. But I think the natural linen might work better. I don't know. Oh, I'm so confused. This is really pretty. I like the prettiness. Let me know what you think. Please help me. So the next one I am going to start before the end of the year, probably, is the Strawberry Sampler. I've talked about this one before. This is by The Needles Praise. Um, it's all kitted up. It's just cream Edinburgh linen and a Vera Star silks. So, and because this is all running stitch and back stitch, I think it'll be pretty quick. But I really like this. And I'm glad to be stitching. Um, the three that I've shown you so far, they're all out of print charts. And so is Villa Mirabilia, which I already told you about. This is also out of print, so I'm doing, excuse me, I'm getting these done so I can pass them off. Um, yeah, the Needles Praise. I love her. I love her. And the last one I think I'll start this year. Actually, Villa Mirabilia will be the 1st of January. This one, Love and Wisdom by The Drawn Thread. I love it. I think it's so nice. I love the, the verse. Wisdom tells me I am nothing. Love tells me I am everything. And I love that. I think that's so, such a nice sentiment. And it's going to be fun. There's lots of fun specialty stitches in it, which I love. And it's all kitted up, just with the called for silks. It's all need point ink, of course. And the called for 30 count sunflower seed dower quality legacy linen. So yeah, that's love and wisdom. So those are the five things I'll be starting pretty soon. I'm also thinking of a Christmas day start, which might be another drawn thread kit that I've got already up there. Um, is a Christmas kit. I'm also thinking of getting out one of the Nora Corbett Bella ladies that I, I already did Bella B. I'm thinking I might do one, one of the other ones. Um, there are so many things I could start if I want to do. <laughs> so many. Um, sometime soon I'll be starting the Lady in the Unicorn Tapestry. Um, I don't know when. Not by the end of the year because I'm not sure if I'm going to use the um, hard anger that got sent with it. I might go and get some burgundy Lugana. I don't know. Decisions, decisions. Decisions are hard. Um, that's all I have to talk about, I think. It was a long video for me. It's been a long time. I haven't been feeling like making videos. That's why I haven't made any. It just seems like so much effort to get all my stuff together, set up the iPad or camera, and talk to you guys. And I always come home and I'm in my work uniform and I don't want to wear that in a video. Um, I don't think I'm allowed to. I think it's against company policy, I imagine. Um, and I never want to change my clothes because I'm super lazy. And I'm always exhausted after work. And my weekends have been busy, not and not with stitching, <laughs> just busy with family and stuff. I had an amazing Thanksgiving dinner. Um, not only people in America celebrate Thanksgiving. I lived in America for a few years when I was a kid, and Thanksgiving was. I, it just seemed. It's just such a nice thing to do to sit around and give thanks. And for me, I mean, I think for most people, but definitely for me, it's not about. Um, the pilgrims stealing land and performing cultural genocide on all the Indians, <laughs> the Native Americans. It's not, it's not about that for me. It's, I, and even Thanksgiving itself, I'm sure, is a harvest festival. It came from harvest festivals that they do all over the world at that time of year. So I feel that Thanksgiving is just an opportunity for us to sit around, talk about what we're thankful for, be with family, and eat seasonally inappropriate food because of course it's spring here in Australia <laughs> um, but yeah we had a lovely time we had Tim's family over and my family and everyone got along great and it was really nice it was the first big thing we've had in our new house and Tim did all the cooking he did an amazing job <laughs> and it was wonderful it was a really nice day um, yeah. I'm very thankful for having Thanksgiving <laughs> um, okay 
and I'm thankful for all this stash. And now I'm thankful that I have the rest of the afternoon to just do stitching. Tim's coming home from work soon, so I better get started. Okay. I will leave you to it. Enjoy your stitching. I'll see you next time I make a video. I'd like to say it'll be next week, but it might not be because I just haven't been feeling the videos that much lately. Um, yeah, catch you later. Bye-bye.